in Shiloh was where the Ark of the Covenant was. And the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God and the glory of God in a right dwelling. Now what do you mean by that? The Ark of the Covenant represented the glory of God and the presence of God. When the people did right by God, his glory would remain with the Ark. All right? They had to give him reverence and they had to be obedient to him. When they did not be obedient with him, God would allow their enemies to come. Their enemies would come and wreak havoc among them. But the mistake that the enemies made was taking the Ark of the Covenant. By taking the Ark of the Covenant, you were defying God. They took the Ark of the Covenant because they thought the Ark of the Covenant represented God, which it did. But see, the power, get this good, that was in the Ark was due to the obedience of the people to God. If they were not obedient to God, the Ark was still there. But they did not have a covering. What's wrong? A lot of people are coming to church, but ain't nothing happening. Because the church represents God, but when his glory is not here, it becomes a place of entertainment. A place of disobedience. And a place of spiritual rebellion. A place of gathering where people come, but there is no healing. There is no deliverance. There is no breakthrough. It's a social gathering. Because we do not reverence whose house it is. We come together to socialize. We speak, we throw kisses, we wave. But what about the presence of God? You're hurting. Things are going wrong in your life. Your life is disrupted. You're on the verge of a nervous breakdown. You're under pressure. You're under stress. Happiness has left you. Your joy is gone. You're mechanically moving. You mechanically come to church. You mechanically come to church. You mechanically come to church. And in mechanically coming, it's just dutiful to come. But what about when I want something from God? When I come to church, I don't sit up in church like I'm sitting in a movie theater. I come to church to be a participant in the worship of God. I come to be a participant in the glory praise. I come to get into the prayer. I come because I need something for my soul. Because when I leave here, every demon and his brother is attacking me. Attacking my mind. Attacking my body. Attacking my future. When I go to church, I ought to feel something to take home with me. I ought to be able to go to work tomorrow with an uplifted head. I ought to be able to deal with some more demons next week when I went to church because when I went, I got a deposit. Because if did nobody get a touch, I got one because I came with the right agenda. Did you go to church? Yeah, I went. What happened? Nothing. Same thing. That's because you were not there. Your body was there, but you were not there. You didn't come for the right reason. You didn't come for God to visit you. And you didn't come to pay a visit to him. You didn't come to get a deposit in your soul. You came because you wanted to be entertained. And you wanted to be said that you went to church. But going to church is not enough. You need to go with the right purpose. Phineas and his brother misused the sacrifices that the people made to come. They caused the glory of God to disappear. Samuel, servant of God, was doing everything right. That's why I tell you, God will pick you out and bless you because of the sincerity of your heart. You can see, be sitting next to somebody that's got a different agenda all together. And you come in and say, God, I need something for my soul. 
I can't talk to nobody about what I'm going through because they wouldn't understand. They look at me prosperous on the outside and don't know that I'm barren on the inside. They look at me on the outside and see a smile, but they don't know it's a mask. They don't know the stuff that I'm going through is about to drive me crazy. But God, you know. What's happening, you know there's a war on the inside. You know the tears that I shed. You, 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 you know I've become Ichabod, but God, I know you're able. Touch somebody and tell them today is your day. You got to say that like you show enough praying for them. Tell them I'm not playing with you. Today is your day. Catch this good, y'all. I've got to take my glory in order to give my glory. I got to take it out of here in order to restore it. I'm going to take it out. And when I take it out, I got to do some house cleaning. And when I clean the house, I put my glory back in. Touch somebody and say, don't get swept out. Don't get swept out. <laughs> say, what do you mean? I'm not talking to sinners. I'm talking to religious folk. To him that knoweth to do good. And doeth it not to him. It is sin. Some of y'all know what to do when you come to church. You don't mess around here and got hooked up with the wrong folk. And instead of you coming, you become a spectator. And you sit around, you don't have a praying spirit. You don't have that spirit that's yielded to God. A weeping spirit. You just have a, I'm here spirit. Be glad I'm here. I'm a tither. Be glad you get my tithes. I'm a giver. Be glad you get my offering. But what about your soul? Some of you all are gifted. You're talented. There's a call on your life. But you're not developing. You're not maturing. You're just a person with a gift and don't know how to use it. You boast of I'm a giver, I'm a gifted person, and you're running from pillar to post saying I'm not being used. If God calls you, he'll make room for you. You want to open doors for yourself. And if the door don't open, you want to kick it down. You want to go somewhere where you can get an open door. When the Bible said your gift will make room for you. Say, so, well, it's taking too long. It's never too long in the eyes of God. Because while God got you waiting, he's developing you. Your attitude determines your altitude. I got a gift and I stay at home. And I watch television. I got a gift. And I only come to church. When it's necessary. You will never develop. A child goes to school. I don't care how smart they are. They have to be taught. So they can develop. In their intellect. If they go someplace. Where they're not being developed. Home school. Parents have to teach them. How to develop their skills. Every challenge is a challenge of development. Anything that does not challenge you does not improve you. Did y'all hear me? Anything that does not challenge you does not improve you. The greater the challenge, the greater the development. When you're challenged, to live right. If you make it, God's got to bless you. When you're challenged with your gift, it will develop. 